my last presentation is a button study where I've been talking about digital competencies, new skills for the new society. Okay, let's present a study about these new skills, digital competencies in teachers and students. So, The growing digitalization of our society is causing large and rapid changes in major art areas, as we have seen, areas such as employment, participation, social inclusion, <coughs> and of course, education. For this reason, people need to acquire new skills and training to be able to participate and benefit with digital opportunities. The Europe strategy, strategy sorry, 20 and 20 is the framework in which Europe since 20, since, since 20 and 10 strives to create the conditions and policies for smart, sustainable and inclusive growth based on seven flagship initiatives, which are these seven pillars. Innovation, digital agenda, we have a new ministry in Spain, do you know? That includes the, that digital agenda. This is a great step in our policy. Okay, sorry. Uh, industry for globalization, youth on the move, resource efficient, new skills and jobs, and platform against poverty. Regarding the sixth pillar, an agenda for new skills and jobs, in 2013, the European Commission Communication on Opening Up Education set out a European agenda for stimulating high quality, innovative ways of learning and, teach, and teaching using new technologies and digital content. In June 2016, in a new proposal, a new skills agenda for Europe, working together to strengthen human capital, employability, and competitiveness, European Commission began the report with a very significant uh, phrase or with a very a very significant sentence. This is it. This concerns all all of us as teachers and students. Yet the situation in Europe calls for action. Seventy millions, seventy millions, let me repeat it, of Europeans lack adequate skills. This is a lot of people without the adequate skills in the level society. So don't panic. What can we do? <laughs> digital skills, digital competencies, the training of these digital competencies will help. So, in this state of affairs, education and training system encounter specific challenges. Digital skills acquisition and development are essential. As analyzed in, pre in previous papers, the European Commission acknowledged the digital competence in 2016. But there are some questions in the air. What's happening with, teacher, with teachers and students in this state of affairs? Are students achieving a real transformation in terms of new skills, digital skills, digital competencies? Are teachers having support enough? What is happening? So we present uh, a study that uh, will give some light in, in this fight or uh, will present empirical evidences to continue, uh, to continue a, um, a very difficult fight. So the study that we present is about digital competencies in teachers and students in compulsory school. It's a descriptive correlational research, mixed methodology, quantitative and qualitative, we have used uh, questionnaires designed at all, and the sample is 77, uh, sorry, 67 teachers and 678 students from Castilla y León, which is uh, this area from Spain. Okay. What about the sample? The sample is composed of teachers and students. About teachers. Teachers is a uh, teacher sample consisting of 67 teachers from eight different <coughs> regions. 
73% from public schools and 26% from private schools, trying to maintain the same proportion in the entire community of Castilla Leon. It's important to mention that it was a convenient sample. What about the students? The people samples included 347 public school children and 331 children from private schools. 52% were boys and 47% were girls. Ranting in ages from 7 to 12 years, as you can see, in all different courses. It's important noting that first grade of students here is a lot of workers here, six, seven years more or less, they were out of the study because we consider they have not yet mastered their reading, writing skills. So it was difficult for the questioners for the study uh, work with children that they can't uh, write or read by themselves. Okay. Let's see some results because if you are interested in the uh, study, I can tell you, you can in depth uh, with different uh, publications, last number of the uh, publication Comunicar, you can read uh, more, um, analyze only about the students, okay? Now we, here we present the students and teachers, which is significant um, relevant because we can compare the students and, the, and their own teachers, okay? As shown in figure, teachers means are higher than students, which is the first sight at the identical result. When analyzing digital competency, logic would suggest that teachers' levels of competence in this area would be higher, so that they may train their students. In other words, training is not possible if teachers are not fluent in this file. Because here, the main point is, is not if you have Mm, higher or lower level of digital competence. Is, is your level, um, um, is your level enough to train your uh, students? So the question is, are teachers fluent enough to teach their students? Are students fluent in the right way? Because as you know, students, children, and in university, we all use mobile dispos uh, devices. We all uh, have digital devices <coughs> at first sight. But this is not true, because are we using these mobile devices in the right way? So this is why we need to go deeper. When observing the frequency distribution for the nihil and total responses, the difference between teachers and students is clearly larger larger in nihil dark in total for all competence areas as shown in figures. This basically means two things. First, that the student's digital competence is low at the teacher's once normal. And secondly, and more important, that, that there is an almost matching number of teachers and students that are fully skilled in the competence areas of digital competence. What is happening in class? What is happening in classrooms? Teachers and students with same level of digital competence? Problem. What do you think? Okay. Even though the analysis is longer and longer, our time is short, and I'm afraid you are tired by this time. So, some conclusions, and we finish. First of, first of all. Although there is a general perception of spontaneous acquisition based on general expression to the internet and connected devices of our time, it is fundamental to be aware of the relevance of the competence areas involved in digital competence as a whole. Secondly, teachers are essential in this process. So they have a role, an essential role, so that their training should be through and fully supported. We must support teachers in their training, okay? This is really important for them. And third, in the third place, students. According to studies, reports, and policies, the student's digital gap is also an issue to be addressed. Is a problem, a problem not solved. What about digital competencies of our students? 
In this case, it is related to the lack of skill, skills that should be acquired through learning, competencies that will be later need to successfully meet the challenges of the network society. So I really think it's our responsibility as teachers, as students, be competent in digital competencies to be able to teach them. Thank you for your attention.